Hi, everybody. Monday on Astral Oracles. St. Michael's Eve, September 28, 2023, uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, Central European time. There'll be a dragon workshop. Um, and let's see how that uh, plays out. Um, but but you can uh, submit uh, questions related to uh, dragons. So uh, if it's anything that's kind of related to the overall theme that you'd want to, to clear out, um, and perhaps even personal questions if they pertain to uh, something specifically uh, draconic or, or reptilian, uh, that will also be all right. But uh, let's keep it uh, general and see how this uh, format flows. And uh, if you've, you can pre-submit uh, questions um, over at Coffee for a, a donation or uh, if you are a member. And thank you so much for everybody who's uh, supported me uh, through the the years it's it's been awesome it's been a very interesting uh, journey um so on that journey uh segueing into that uh the dragons of course were a huge uh, present they were right after the the blue pleiadians uh, they were the first entity i ever vocal uh, channeled for myself and um and they have always been connected to me somehow to a sense of of personal uh, guardianship and uh, uh, to some extent also uh, companionship I, I think uh, so right now I am in this little red house in the lowlands where my uh, invisible uh, friend also used to live he lived in a, a red house in the Netherlands um, as a child uh, in that sense there is this uh, strange sense of, of, of guidance of synchronicity uh, connected to to the draconic patterns as well and um, speaking of them as this more let's say cosmological force uh, there is to almost everything um, as there is an angelic resonance pattern to uh, every little subatomic personal, uh, particle there is also a, a reptilian pattern to that uh, there is this um let's call it almost entropic challenge um you could think of it as the uh, the thing that also um destabilizes stable systems in order to get them to develop and so if you look at that in in the kind of manichaean respect of a a, a fight between um light and darkness uh, then it of course appears as if the uh, these reptilian forces uh, what they want to do is that they they want to uh dyson sphere the light right that they want to use it uh, to transfer the energy to their own purposes um but then of course in the the larger the spiritual sense also the very manichaean sense uh, that only allows for the ultimate uh triumph of light to come about um so light is playing this uh deceptive uh, battle with uh, the darkness where it allows darkness to believe that it's winning right only to to draw it out and then then shine through in, in the ultimate uh, victory uh, that seems to be like a very deep um, uh, redemption pattern that we uh, we find everywhere uh, where stories are, are told that everywhere where humans live right uh, this idea of of you know the forces of good being uh, challenged and almost overcome but then hey presto at at the end then the, the light began to to rise again so uh, isn't that beautiful and and the dragons really as we come to the heart center and and the dragon heart um they really seem to to represent and embody this in in strange ways uh, I've been having this realization uh, this morning that I don't quite know what to to make of. But whereas uh, the lower chakra centers, you know, all these are universal energy frequencies. Um, where the lower chakra centers, the first three chakras in humans are usually uh, connected to um, the feminine aspect of humanity archetypically. Uh, and the higher three chakras, uh, this isn't the hierarchy of values. Um, but they're usually connected to, to the male aspect, um, so Shakti and, and Shiva. Uh, in dragons, it's, it seems to be uh, the opposite. Well, partially, they, they have a nine chakra structure um, when they're complete, but um, they also 
have uh, a pattern where it seems that it is their uh, male energies that are more uh, drawn to the uh, incarnate that are more related to um, let's say drawing blood from the world uh, whereas their um, feminine energy archetypically is more related to the celestial the transcendent the uh, the encompassing uh, the things that uh, also shield and, and protect uh, and in that aspect it's it's interesting that this mother of, of dragons is an archetype that that kind of uh, appeals so much to uh, the global consciousness that it's it's seeped into it from from different channels um, and if different media of course uh, in popular fiction um, but but this idea that you know that the feminine uh, fierceness that that protects and and here we come to the heart right where the uh, the knight turns into uh, the king or the, the queen in in that matter uh, dragon imp uh, no not empress dragon queen right um, but this aspect um, where Notice what the, the good ruler does is one that uh, protects and shields so things can come about and, and run in good and orderly manners in, in the kingdom uh, and that so uh, justice can be be done to the widow and the orphan and, and the rest of us, uh, but but even the, the weakest in society. Uh, and, and there is, of course, that um, image of, of the fierce that the warrior mother right where it's if you want to... Uh, if you want to get at the eggs, you, you have to come by her, uh, go by her, and, and that, that that will probably cost you dearly, um, which is a, a, a beautiful, um, strong, fierce aspect of it. And, and this is where you know that the integrated heart center, um, where we're activated, where we're, we're called out, um, and and I I I kind of been able to tell like this is is a place that it's it's felt very shut down for me in the past months and I, I think I've deliberately allowed myself to to grow and be a little hard hearted with a, a lot of things simply because I also felt like I, uh, kind of fighting for my survival here again like this, uh, dragon theme right, uh, so so there are just things that I I needed to to prioritize, um and that also then you know grows. Uh, still becomes shut down and so in this weekend partially I had the, the very stirring experience of just extremely loud music being uh, being sort of played right outside of my house for days on end um, and not being able to, to do anything about it uh, and then also the experience of you know going to the woods uh, due to that um, and coming across a female snake uh, that I felt also uh, activated this kind of um, Shakti presence. So this idea that the, the, the stirring female serpent in, in the human archetype, right, is um, what kind of calls uh, that weird uh, disengaged uh, sterile sense of, of the mental, the, the Shiva energy uh, calls it out. And so the, um, the melding of those two energies, of course, takes uh, place in, in the heart. So this is where, you know, the kind of bloody uh, male aspects of, of, of the dragon uh, rises and then merges with the, the celestial aspects of the female dragon and turns into this uh, incarnate perfected uh, being. So, so this is kind of where, you know, a strange part of the mythology that, that Flip has talked about, others have, have, have talked about, uh, that, that the dragons have been incarnate on, on earth and, and taken form in, in different places and, and often they'll, they'll choose to, to slumber, to kind of step out of, of reality and, and then return at, at certain points. Uh, but these are, are very often, uh, these are, are dragon queens that, that, that lay and brood on, on their eggs uh, in, in the deep uh, recesses of the earth until they're, they're ready to emerge. Uh, don't necessarily take all this too too literally right uh, but it seems to be this this archetype um, that's then also connected to dragon shapes of, of lava flow that's formed from fresh lava flows and, and that sense that we we kind of live in a, a draconic body body uh, and that seems to speak to a, a mystery that the the world is a, a hatchling project like the, the 
the the planet itself is a kind of uh, it's a kind of multi-purpose egg. Uh, it's 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 a substrate for cultivation of life forms, and and in the the darker mythologies, uh, you know, the ancient shape-shifting reptilians and and evil lizard people controlling the the, the world. I think it's an, an intuition about this idea that that the world is is surrendered to these uh, strong, volatile, living forces. Uh, that somehow seem to be engaged in bringing about more complex life forms, but are also uh, breaking uh, them down simultaneously in order to to do that. Uh, so that sense of being sort of both protected, but also protected for a purpose that goes beyond our own self-interest, um, which uh, archetypically, of course, is um the mindset of of the slave because that that's what actually goes on that okay maybe I, i'm being fed and and sometimes i uh, i'm being sheltered but it's essentially because somebody is using me for for their own nefarious ends uh, so there is an intuition uh, about that um and and that's what we're, we're in many ways trying to to square here uh, by raising these energies and by letting these higher and higher dragon manifestations and and guides uh, be able to to take us on a, a journey um so the question again of course be becomes who do i uh, i want to to channel there are um so many uh, dragons i could channel um and I think what I will do, I haven't channeled her in, in, in public, uh, but I will channel this uh, blue dragon guide uh, calling herself Isa, um, which is strangely enough, of course, also means Jesus in, in Arabic, I, I believe. Um, but let's see what, what she has to say about um, this heart space, this emerald energy awakening. Um, I hope that wasn't too complex. You can show up at the live stream and ask clarifiers. You can also send me and submit uh, questions. And if you have general questions um, related to the topic, they're, they're, they're welcome. Um, because I'm, I'm very interested in, in the explorations of this. So uh, hoping that uh, served you. Much love to you out there. Greetings, dear ones. I speak and I give you my blessings, my love, my enjoyment of our hearts. Reunionizing, coming together again, recognizing what has been lost for the both of us and what we can retrieve here in the heart. My name is Isa, and I am most thrilled, absolutely blown away with gratitude for being with you this day. And yet there is someone else here as well. There is another dragon companion that wishes to join us and that has certain words to say that is my energy is still slightly off it is sapphire compared to this emerald that we are expressing this day and so i will join you soon for other angles messages and perspectives and i will turn 
this interaction over to a dragon friend, a green emerald dragon. I will allow him to give you his own name. No one allows me to do anything. I do as I wish because it appears with wisdom at that moment. I am Melchior, Dragon Lord of old. This planet I inhabited approximately 50 to 70,000 years ago in your reckoning of years and cycles of time. You were not much different then. Yet, your instincts were better, dare I say. You understood to live and nest in spaces on the planet that were proper for you, rather than turning places that should be hallowed into hollows for human dwelling. These landscapes of stone you have constructed, they suit you only in the long run. That is, you live inside things that were not meant for bodies to dwell in before they die. You have constructed mausoleums for living spaces and you wonder why you feel afraid and disconnected when storms blow in and the elements arise fiercely threatening to tear down your graves and confront you with the death that you have already set your hearts on. You know that these cities of the dead, that they are kept alive by the constant sacrifice of its inhabitants. They yield of blood to its barren lap, and there these ancient, thirsty gods of the underworld that can never have enough life force. They gobble up what is served to them and much more that isn't. And yes, it is true. In the animal grounds, outside the Colosseum, there is a violent exuberance of life. There is a flash, a scream, a war of desperate life before it submerges into this great stony void.
on the millstones. You are ground into nothing. The millstones driven by the hands of the children you gave life to. This I teach you only to let you know that it is in these unseen horrors that we work to take from you what you do not understand to hold on to as you are latching on to life at whatever cost for whatever price you are given what is most worthless of ours to sit with the deep-seated fear of being and you are giving to us what is most valuable to us and should be to you as well the creative life force the deep love that binds existence together it is to free this within you that I, Melchior, I come forward this day. It is to let you know that for whatever blood you give, you should demand a precious jewel in return. You should take home a sumptuous meal You should be given a palace to dwell and restore yourself in return. So where is your palace? Have you constructed it in this life? Within or without, do you have a place to dwell? Is there a place where you are Lord, where you lay claim and that and where your domain reaches and is overseen by you and you alone? This place is the place of the sacred emerald. This is the place of the hearthstone. This is the place that you must cultivate in order to not be thrown to and fro by the impulses of ever transmuting ever energies of flows of runaway life force this is the space you must cultivate I myself I used to dwell in those forests that stretched across the reaches of Africa in the north when there was still life 
I roam freely in those spaces. There I took what I needed and I returned to the land always what was not useful for me. As well as giving back a little of much use of sacrificing of donating my own etheric blood this elixir of transmutation to the soils there to the trees there the blood of the dragon it still grows and lives on in certain trees in the far reaches of the continent out east east near Eden go to that palatial paradise within go to the sacred garden that is your center Go to that sacred grove that holds the emerald heartstone. Go there. Be at home. Be at peace. Feel the eternal flow of life, the wellspring of love that flows forward from this space. With that, I depart from you. Truth, love, valor, pride, farewell. It's always interesting with, with surprise visitors and, and guides. So uh, a new dragon lord uh, made an entrance. I, I haven't uh, I haven't channeled him before. That was that was interesting, Melchior. Um, so um, yes, remember uh, dragon workshop live stream and uh, much love to you out there.